Every time I looked at you earlier on, I just saw that there's joy over you. And I think it's important for you to know that that joy that you carry is not just for you, it's for those around you also. So when you're praising Him, when, you, when you're joyful, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when you are joyful, you're releasing strength to those around you. And, 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 and those times that you're feeling so low are the times that you just need to raise your hands and just give Him praise because then the strength comes. So I just wanted to encourage you with that. Yeah. So let's just come before Him and just wait on Him. You, you fought hard and long. I feel like to tell you, you fought hard and long. You've got this depth, this deep, deep sense of knowing who God is inside of you. And, and, and you are strong. God, I feel like God wants me to tell you, you are strong. You are steadfast. And you are unshakable. You don't take nonsense. <laughs> but I just wanted to encourage you with that. Yeah? So I just wanted to, while he's playing, just come before him and whatever is on your heart, just lay it before him. I feel like he's given me a word tonight to speak to you, but just, just take some time to wait on him. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you that it is finished. Amen. The job is done. Amen. We are redeemed. We are free. We are whole. We are healed. We are forgiven. Lord, the job is done. It is finished. And Father, because it is finished, Lord God, we don't work for your favor. We work from a place of favor. We are free. We have favor. We have we are children of the Most High God. We are royal. We are holy. We are forgiven of God. And we stand tonight knowing that we know, that we know, that we know. Father, that you fight our battles for us. 
We know, Lord God, we read the book. <laughs> Come on. We read the book and we win. <laughs> we win, Lord. We win. We win. We win. <laughs> Thank you, Father, that we win. Thank you, Lord God, that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. Neither life, nor death, no angels, no principalities. Nothing can separate us from your love. Thank you, Lord, that we lift up our eyes to the hills and know that our help comes from you. Thank you, Lord, that you are our shepherd. We lack nothing, nothing, nothing. We lack nothing. And we give you praise and we give you honor, Lord God, for who you are, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes in that context, what tends to happen is, is as believers, we become so comfortable in this amazing grace. Because it's okay for us, it's very easy, it's very simple for us to look back and go, amazing grace, you've saved me. you brought me to where I am today. And we celebrate that, right? That's amazing, you know, God brought me out of darkness into His marvelous light. I mean, what does He say? He says, you're a chosen generation, a royal peace with a holy nation, a people for God's special possession. Why? So that you may declare the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. Wonderful, great. It's amazing. Amen. But sometimes in the context of grace, we can become so unresponsive to what God is calling us to do. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes we, we celebrate where He's brought us from, and we stay where we are, and we forget that He has more for us. Mm -hmm. There's more for us to do. Genesis 1 verse 1 to 3 says, and I'll read it to you, it says, In the beginning, we, we all know this, this text, right? It's so beautiful. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth, the earth was without form. And void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. 
I mean, I just, it's just such a beautiful picture, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was actually amazing that God laid this on my heart, because this is actually what I'm preaching about tomorrow morning in, in oh. church also. Right. Just a different angle to the scripture. Everything was cool, right? Everything was quiet. Everything was dark. Everything was quiet until something happened. Right at the beginning, it was quiet until something happened. And the very next verse, something happened that is probably the most disruptive thing that has ever hit the universe. And that thing that happens is, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. One of the most disruptive statements that God can release into the universe, let there be light. You see, light is disruptive. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm okay not to know things. I'm okay to walk in the middle of, of Sydney in the business district and not to see the person that's begging for money. I'm okay not to see that. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm okay not to know that friends and family is battling. I'm okay not to know that the guy down the street is not doing well or the neighbor around the corner is not doing that well. I'm okay with that. We say we're not, but sometimes we just are. Oh, am I just, is that just me? Is, is that something that, that you often find easy to do? No. Mm. <coughs> the problem is when light comes, we have a responsibility because we are carriers of light. Yes. We have a responsibility when light comes. Mm. Let there be light. Mm. Might be the one of the most disruptive text in the Bible. Because yeah. everything was fine, right? It was dark. It was, you know, if you're walking, if you're walking in this room and you put all the lights off and you're walking and you stumble over something, you can say, oh, I didn't see it's there. The lights were off. It was dark. But if the light's on, the light has come and you stumble over something, you have no excuse because you saw it was there. God says, let there be light. A little story I'll tell you. I'm standing one night, um, I work um, <clears throat> in the corporate world and I'm standing one night and I'm taking clients out and we're standing and it's late at night. It's, you know, 12, 12.30 a.m. in the morning and I'm out with clients and all I'm thinking, I just want to go home. Can these guys not go home? I've had enough now, you know, to work, but still I've had enough, I just want to go home. And I'm standing there, and out of the blue, at 12.30 a.m., in the middle of a pub in Sydney, a client pulls me aside and he says to me, I need you to help me. He says, I have a six-year-old son, and I think he's gay. What am I going to do? Because everyone's going to reject him. I don't know what to do. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking, wouldn't it have just been easier for him not to speak to me? Because it's easy not to know. It's easy not to want to deal with those things. It's easy not to, I didn't know about it, so that's why I never encouraged people. That's why I never came alongside people. It's easy not to know, right? But no, the Savior of the universe the God of the universe speaks into our lives and He says, Let there be light. I have placed you on this earth so that you are the carriers of my light. And I don't know about you, but that's confronting. That is so confronting. I sat once, I got into a cab once in the city, and I'll tell you a lot of stories because for me, this thing that we do has to work everywhere or it has to work nowhere. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The belief that we have is either the most important thing in the world or it is the biggest lie. Either one of those two things has to drive us to do something. <coughs> it has to drive us to step out for more. I get into a cab and I just feel to say something to this lady that's driving the cab and I say it to her and she goes, How did you know these things? And immediately the door opens for me to start encouraging her. Let there be light is the call for us. Because like I said, when there's no light, there's no responsibility. I walked once down 
um, a, a street in Wellington, New Zealand, and I'm walking, and it's late at night, I'm again coming from, I'm always doing these client dinners, I'm again coming from the client's dinner, and I'm walking down the street, and I've got two colleagues with me, and the colleagues know what I believe. And they say, Pete, can we just go put back to our towel? And I go, no, there's just something I feel I need to do. And I'm walking, and, and there's all these homeless people in the middle of Wellington, and they, they're kind of gathering together in a warm place to ready, ready to sleep for the night. And as I walk, I hear this cough, this deep cough. And I stop. And, I'm, and, and light comes. And I'm saying, God, this is inconvenient. I want to go to my hotel to go and sleep. This is inconvenient. And he goes, no, I've shown you something. I want you to go. And, um, and, and not only, it's an older guy sitting and having a cigarette. Not only is he right over there, but I have to climb over all of these homeless people laying on the floor. They're blocking my way. Inconvenient, right? So inconvenient. And I go to him and he's sitting and he's having his cigarette. And I look at him and I go, man, Jesus sent me over here to you because I want to pray for you for your chest to open up. Because your chest is tight. And he looks at me and he looks at his cigarette. And he looks at me as if to say, this is why my chest is tight. But I, was, I wasn't there to tell him what yeah. he's doing right or wrong. I was just there because light came. Because a word came, light came. And I said to him, can I pray for you? He said, okay. I said, can I put my hand on your chest? He said, okay. Probably in his early 70s. I put my hand on his chest and I prayed and I said, chest open up in Jesus' name. And his chest opens up. His eyes go big. He looks at me and he does something that us as believers need to understand that the world needs love. Yes. You know what he does? He looks at me, he throws his cigarette, I haven't said anything to him, he throws his cigarette on the floor and he kills it. And he gives me his attention. And we start talking. And light comes and, and, and God just places something in my heart. And I say to him, it's time to call your daughter. You need to go home. And that night he called his daughter to come and fetch him, to take him home. To get him off the street. Well, why am I saying that? I'm not saying that because it's cool to walk up to people at 12 o'clock at night and pray for them, for God to touch them. I'm not saying it for that reason. What I'm saying is... There's a responsibility that comes with when God speaks to you. Yeah. More than that, there's a responsibility as carriers of light. Yeah. What does he say? He says, you are the light of the world. Yeah. Now that would have been easy if he said, Jesus is the light of the world. And I want you to, to point them to Jesus. But he doesn't say that. He says, you are the light of the world. Why? Because he's inside of you. So you are the light of the world. So wherever you go, light goes. You are the light of the world. Psalm 119 verse 130 puts it so beautifully. Listen to what it says. The entrance of your words give light. Come on, that's so good. The entrance of your word it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So when God's word comes, it gives light. Yes. It just brings clarity. It just brings, just brings a clear picture to who He is and what He's about. Yes. You see, the moment God speaks a word, it brings light. But more importantly for us as believers, it makes us accountable for what He's just shown. And that's tough, right? Come on, let's be honest. That's tough. Because he goes, I can do anything, but I choose you to be my hands and feet. Come on, how good is that? We get to partner with him. Can you imagine that the king of the universe, the one that creates everything, the one that spoke the world into existence, can you imagine that he goes, I want to partner with you. I want you to be my hands and feet. How amazing is that? How incredible is that? I mean, think about how incredible it is that, picture this, right? 
Jesus is walking on the, on the shore. He's walking on the shore. There's some guys on the boat, right? Mm -hmm. Now we retrospectively, we have the freedom of knowing what's going to happen because we've read the book. Mm -hmm. But think about it this way, right? He's walking on the shore. Next to the Sea of Galilee. I'll read to you Matthew 4 verse 18 to 19. He says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Yeah. Okay, you know, yeah. picture this. Yeah. They've never met this guy. Mm. Right? He's walking down on the side. They're busy fishing. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Mm. Think about that. That's like a dude just walking up and saying, Hey, follow me. And he continues to walk. Yeah. What do you do? You're like, what? Are you mad? Because if you sit here, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know, yes, like I said, we, we, have the, we have the understanding of what happens. Yeah. But, but at that point in time, they don't know this guy. Yeah. He just goes, hey, follow me. And he continues to walk. Yeah. What do they do? Yeah. They drop their nets and they follow him. Why is this so incredible? Because there's something that happens inside of your heart when you hear from God. Something happens inside you. People can tell me, I mean, you can tell people whatever you want to tell them, but when you say something that comes from the Father's heart, something shifts. The most simple word, something shifts. He just said, hey, follow me. And they went, how I would picture it is the way, oh my goodness, I've been waiting for those words all my life. Think about the time that he called you. And he said, I'm knocking on your heart's door. You might have been sitting in church. You might have been sitting at home. And suddenly you have that feeling inside of you. And he's calling you. He's calling you, I want you to journey with me. I want that relationship. And suddenly you realize, this is what I was created for. So these guys are fishing. And he goes, follow me. And they go, oh my goodness, this is what I was created for. But look at the beautiful picture, right? Look at the beautiful picture. Because, like I said, a lot of the time we read the Bible with the, the, the ability to know what happens. But think about the other one. I'll give you another example. Think about Moses. Moses walks past a burning bush. Now I can guarantee you there's other people that walk past that burning bush. Because the bush was burning. Remember they're in the desert. Yeah. So there's bush, bushes that burn. Yeah. The bush is burning. Moses walks and he stops. And the Bible says, he says to himself, let me go and see what's going on here. So I'm telling you, there's other people that walk past, but Moses stops and he goes. And then the Lord calls him and says, take off your, take off your, your shoes, the, step feet, the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. And Moses has this encounter and God calls him, go and fetch my people. What is the picture I'm painting here? Isn't it just so amazing? Yeah. Isn't it just so amazing yeah. that he knows exactly <laughs> What to say to us, when to say to us, and how to say to us. And isn't it amazing that when He says it to us, something happens inside of us. Amen. Now I'm linking the two together. Now I link the two together. We're talking about let there be light. Let there be light. And then linking that to, I choose you. I call that out in you. Now imagine that you're walking up to someone and the Lord says to you, I want you to go and tell that person that I love them. And you go, oh, is that all? I don't know if I want to do that. Do I have to do that today, Lord? Yeah. I'll tell you a little story. Some years back, I... Uh, <coughs> actually, let me tell you the story. Because I want to tell you that I had the privilege of God showing me what happens when you don't listen to Him. Okay, let me tell you that story. I was in a, I was in Kmart in Hornsby. I was in Kmart, and I'm I'm walking in Kmart, and there's a couple walking, 
and the Lord says to me, go to them, give them your business card, and tell them if they need help, they can call you. I'm like, I don't know them. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Look up. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to walk the other way. And I'm walking to the back of Kmart. I'm walking around in Kmart. And he says, I told you what to do. Go to them. And I said, God, I don't know where they are. They're gone already. Yeah. <laughs> and as I leave Kmart, they're standing close to the door. Oh. I just keep walking. Okay. I go up the travelator. God says, I told you to give them your business card. Go back. This is the third time he's telling me now. I felt like Samuel. <laughs> the third time. I'm like, oh, you know, God, I'd really love to do that, but now they're gone. And as I'm going up the tablet, they're coming down the tablet. <laughs> the third time. As stubborn as I am, and as stubborn as all of us are believers yeah. are. Because we want, you know, we want God to take us and put us in front of the person. Yeah. You know, we're stubborn, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I leave it. Young couple, I leave it, don't speak to them, I get home, I am feeling so terrible. Mm. My stomach's turning, I'm feeling, I don't feel guilty, I just feel like, you know when you feel like yeah, you just yeah, missed yeah. an opportunity, it, yeah. you know? So anyway, I get home, I tell my wife, I said, Monique, my wife's name is Monique, I said, this just happened in Kmart, now she goes, idiot, just do what God tells you to do, you know that? <laughs> Always listen to your wives, guys, yeah. always listen to your wives. Um, so I said, ah, you know what, anyway. The next week, no, no, sorry, two weeks later, two months later, two months later, we have this holiday program at, at this church that I was at. Um, and don't worry, I'll finish with the story. I, I know I talk a lot. No. Two, two months later, we have this holiday program. And the, at the, the holiday program, at the end of the holiday, on the Friday night, what we have is we have all the parents and all the kids we have like a, a little like a carnival type of thing and uh, you know church leaders we get to meet the parents and chat to them and so on it's kind of just the end of the week mm -hmm. so i'm standing and i'm chatting to someone my wife now i'm originally from south africa my wife says come with me quickly i said what she says i want to introduce you to a couple they're from south africa mm -hmm. i'm like oh okay and as i'm walking i'm seeing <laughs> oh my goodness that's the couple <laughs> And while I'm walking to, to, to them, I lean out to my wife and say, that's the couple. She says, well, you'll just have to suck it up now. <laughs> anyway, so we start chatting to them and so on. And we're just chatting and they say, hey, pleased to meet you and so on. And we introduce, cool. All great, right? And I'm like, oh, man, God, you're so amazing. But what are you showing me here? And God says, just, just be patient. Sunday morning I go to church. Um, I mean, these guys don't come to the church. It was a holiday program for the kids, right? Um, for the kids of the community. So Sunday morning I go to church. I come out of church. I'm sitting on the couch in the lounge. And I'm just uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Now the next part I'm going to tell you now is freaky. It's completely out there. So just bear with me. Because I've never experienced... That was the first time I experienced this. I'm uncomfortable. My daughter says to me, what's going on? I said... I need to go and visit that couple. She goes, but you don't know where they live. I hear, you know when you hear yourself say something? I hear myself say, God will show me where they live. She looks at me, she goes, sometimes you just say crazy things. <laughs> I get into my car and I start driving. And I kid you not, this is the first time in my life that this happens to me. I'm driving and I feel I need to turn right here. I turn right, feel I need to turn left here. And while I'm driving, I say, God, even if you take me to their house, how am I going to know that that's their house? You know? Yeah. You're like, God like says, oh, here's the house. And I'm like, yeah, but how do I know? Because it's a Sunday afternoon. People don't like to be disturbed on a Sunday afternoon. He, said, he says to me, I'll show you, and I'm driving, he goes, drive, turn right here, turn left here, turn right here, turn left, drive, okay, stop, <coughs> I stop, I turn to my right, and they're busy hanging curtains, so I can see them through the glass window, and I'm like, man, God, you are cool, <laughs> this just worked out, but now I have to suck it up, I need to go and find out what's going on here, anyway, I go inside, knock on the door, they go, hey, how did you... I said, that's a long story. I'm not going to try and explain that to you. I said to them, I just need to come in and I need to speak to you guys. They said, okay. We went into their lounge. We sat down and I said, I need to ask for forgiveness. 
I said, I'm a pastor at the local church. I said, about two months ago, I saw you guys in Kmart, and God asked me to give you my business card and tell you whatever you need, we'll support you. I said, I'm coming to ask for forgiveness because I didn't do that. And his wife, the wife, starts bawling. She starts, starts crying. And she, the tears are running down. I'm sitting there thinking, what did I say? What did I say? She, tears are running down her face and the husband's comforting her. And then they say to me, they said, you know what? They had moved to Australia from South Africa. And when I saw them, they had been here for four days. They didn't know anyone. They didn't know what to buy, what not to buy. He says, she says to me, at night we used to eat takeaways off boxes because we didn't have our furniture. We felt alone. We started wondering whether this was the right place that God wanted us. We started questioning all these things. She said, I used to cry myself at sleep at night because no one was there for us. We had no family here. We had no support. We didn't know what to do. And she said, for two years, for, for, for one month, because a month later they stuff going, for one month mm. it was torture. Mm. And, and they could not, they did not know whether this was where God wanted them. Mm. And they, would, they were li literally ready to go back. Because they were so lonely and alone. And I just, it just broke my heart. Mm. It just broke my heart and God said to me, now can you understand that when I tell you to do something, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Do what I ask you to do. We are the carriers of light. And when light comes, imagine when light comes and God says to you, I want you to go over to someone. I'll use you as an example. Imagine when light comes and God tells you, I want you to go over to someone and tell them that they are filled with joy. Imagine he tells you to do that. I imagine that that person standing there had been waiting for those words. Hey, follow me all their lives. And the words that he's just given you could be the words that they need to hear. Follow me and I will make you fishes of men. And I'll end with this. You know the beautiful part of that story. Follow me and I will make you fishes of men is... God says, follow me. That's our part. Follow me. That's our part. And then he says, Jesus says to them, and I will make you fishers of men. See, so often we try and figure that out. Well, how am I going to do this? Well, how am I going to... He says, no, no, follow me. Just follow me. That's your part. We are following him. And in the journey of pursuing Him, in the journey of following Him, He makes us fishes of men. He tells us what to say, when to say it, how to say it. He tells us when to speak, when not to speak. He tells us what to say, what not to say. All we're doing is following Him. Sometimes we can overthink it, right? Oh, should I say this now? Should I say that? Oh, I wonder if they need this encouragement. I wonder if they need that encouragement. No, no, just follow Him. He makes you fishes of men. Amen. Here's the second part that's beautiful about it. What were they doing? They were fishing. Yeah. Hey, they were fishing. So what were they doing in the natural? Their profession was fishing. So what does he do? He says, I'm going to take what you are doing in the natural and I'm not appropriate it. I'm going to take it and bring it into the supernatural. And when you were fishing for fish, you will now be using those same skills to fish for men. So I take what you are doing in the natural. I put my anointing on it. I put it into the supernatural. And you now become fishes of men. So now, if you were an administrator, when you come into the kingdom, you know what? You know how to organize things. You know how to structure things. Now, if you were a good salesman, you come into the kingdom, you become an evangelist. You know how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you were a good strategist, and you know exactly how to strategize things, you come into the kingdom, you now become a prophetic voice to the kingdom. Because he takes... What He has created you to be. Remember He says, the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. 
Meaning what He gives to you, He'll never take it away from you. So He's giving you a gift. He goes, hey, I'm going to take that gift and I'm going to reappropriate it for the kingdom. Come on, that's good news. Amen. That's good news. Amen. You know why that's good news? Because it means that everything inside of me, everything inside of me is setting me up for my future. Yes. Amen. Come on. Amen. We often think like, why that, Lord? Why that, Lord? Why that? He goes, I'll take it. And I'll put my anointing on it. And I'm setting you up for the future. That's Amen. so good. Amen. He's such a good God, isn't he? He's such a good God. So I want to encourage you and leave you with these words. I keep saying this is my last thought and I keep going. <laughs> no, it's good. Go on. <laughs> follow Him. Just follow Him, man. You know what? Just follow Him. And the last thing I want to tell you is this. And on your journey of following Him, there's a lot of times, there's a lot of times in our lives that we look back on our lives and we go like, man, there's some stuff I didn't get right over there. There's some stuff. I'm, you know, like me, the story I just told you, man, I should have spoken to that couple. I should have done this. I should have done that. And I'm going to cast your, your attention to, to this beautiful portion in, in, in the Bible where the angel comes to Sarah and Abram and says to them, you are going to have a son. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yes. Remember what she does? Yeah. She just laughs. She laughs, yeah? yeah. She just laughs. Now think about it, because if you look at the scripture, the scripture, when you read it, in the New King James Version, Lord is written in capital L-O-R-D, which means it wasn't an angel that came to her. It was the Lord that came to her. So who did she laugh at? She laughed at the Lord. Yeah. Now cast your attention forward to the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews says, Sarah believed God. It doesn't say she loved. It says she believed God. She had faith and she believed God. You know, all the, the book of Hebrews talks about all the guys that's done amazing things. Sarah's in there and the Bible says she believed God. She had faith doesn't say she laughed. So what does he do? He goes, you did something over there. But don't worry about that. Because here's the key. I am the author and I am the finisher. Mm -hmm. So I rewrite your story. Mm -hmm. So what the enemy has meant for harm, I will take it, I will flip it, I will rewrite it. And I'll use it for good for the kingdom. And now you will be remembered for someone that had faith. In what I told you. Not someone that laughed when I gave you the good news. That's encouraging, isn't it? Come on, it's so encouraging. It's so encouraging. Thank you, Lord. Let's just, let's just come before you. Thank you, Father. I give you honor. We give you glory. Oh, you're such a good God. You're such a good God. You're so good, Lord. You are so good. We want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your goodness, Lord God. And Father, we want to thank you. <laughs> Lord, we think of the Old Testament where Moses, where you said to Moses, tell my people that I want them all to be my priests. And Lord, when he went to the people, they said to him, they said, God is scary. We don't want to be his priest. We want you to be the mediator between us and God. And Lord, such a sad and terrible day in the history of our heritage that as people we rejected wanting to be your priests, Lord. But Father, thank you that you never gave up on us. Amen. Thank you that you never gave up on us, O Lord God. And Father, thank you that you sent your Son to die on the cross for us, to come and redeem us back to the Father. And Lord, then I look at the fact that you called us to be priests and we said, no, we don't want that because you're scared. But Lord, then we go to the book of Peter. And in the book of Peter, it says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. 
a people for God's special possession that we may declare the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. So you have re-established our identity. While we rejected you, you re-established our identity. And now we are a kingdom of priests, Lord God. And Father, as believers tonight, as a kingdom of priests, we stand before you tonight. And Lord, we say, we will stand in between you and the people. So those people that do not know you, those people at work, those people in our circle of friends, our families in other countries, those people that don't know you, Lord God, Father, we commit tonight that we will intercede for them, we will pray for them, we will believe for them, we will shine light into their lives, Lord God, so that they might experience the goodness of who you are. Lord, would you bless each and every person here tonight? Would you strengthen them? Even right now, I pray for anyone that's not feeling well or there's sickness in their body right now, Lord God. We just release your healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I feel in my heart, Lord God, to pray for, for everyone represented here with children, children that don't know you. Father, we call them home. Right now, in Jesus' name, we call them home to a Father that loves them. Come home to a Father that loves you. Come home to this amazing God that died on the cross for you so that you can be free. Because the Bible says God has no hidden agenda because it is, it is for freedom that Christ has come to set us free. There's no hidden agendas here. It is for freedom that you have come to set us free. So would you bless us? Would you guide us, Lord God? And thank you that light came and light changed us and light transformed us. And we are now standing before you. Oh, free. Oh, so free. Chosen, royal. We are so free before you. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think I did contact him, but he hasn't returned my call. So, um, 
Alana. What's gonna be, Alana? Are we so still? <laughs> are we still gonna be? Uh, are we still gonna be um, having the service for this Saturday, which is the thirty-first? And um, I think God said, just give him a call again. Like, I said, all right, I'll try. And I said, oh, I said, okay, I'll try. I'll call again. I said, and that's it. In the morning, I think around nine thirty or ten a.m. And then that's it. Pastor Peter answered the phone. <laughs> I said, I think God is awesome. Yeah? So he was there like listening to your prayer. Because he knows that um, I really want Pastor Peter to be here. Because, see, when I first met Pastor Peter, like, I didn't really know, you know, like what God's going to say, you know, through him about me. But uh, when he came... Um, after this, it was after the service, and um, I think Pastor Peter came to us. Like we were just, you know, sitting in that, um, you know, as, uh, I mean, in that uh, area there, and then suddenly he just came to me, and then he put his hand on me, like on my shoulder, and then suddenly he said, "Oh, I think." I can see something, like I said, what is it? <laughs> I was worried there, I said, oh no, I think he's gonna see my bad things, I think God's gonna see my bad things. <laughs> and then, and then he just said, I think, yeah, I think, oh no, like I, I said, like I was just sitting there listening, I said, oh what is it, what is it? And, and that's it, and then I think was a, Pastor, Pastor Peter said, um, I think God said there's something, there's something that in you, like, um, Something that uh, needs to be taken out, and I said, "What is it? Like, what does it have to be taken out?" Like when he started talking, I was just I was just listening, and then I said, "What is it, Lord? What is?" It? <laughs> because I was so afraid. I know. I said, "Oh no, there's, I think there's something that God wants me to, to take things out." You know, because I know there's something that you know, like I think He's trying to take it out, maybe, but I'm still like you know, holding on it, and then they said, "But this time." really, really completely, he told, you know, through Pastor Peter that I had to take that out, and I did, I said, God, please forgive me, because uh, I know that it has, it has been such a long time that God wants me to walk in truth, walk in, you know, in, um, in His Word, like, you know, because I was, like, worried so much about something, and, uh, yeah, and that's it, I think. Uh, God always speak through mm. Pastor Peter. So like tonight we we did um, see the first time he just I mean the first he get up into the altar and then uh, start talking. We can feel the presence of God. I mean we can feel like something is going God going you know uh, something that God uh, want to say to us and it is isn't it? Like um, he start talking to my sisters and I said oh no. Like I said, I can't believe this. I said, oh no, I can't believe this. Like I said, because I know I was, I was there in, in the community chat after the service. I said, oh no, he came to me and then started talking. I said, and then my sister said, oh no, like I said, oh, I think it, and it is, it is true. I think what he said, I mean, what God said through him, it is true. I mean, like I declare that it is true. So whatever that, you know, God said through him, it is true because, because God, do speak through his servant. I mean, that's what he word, his word is. So I think uh, we're just so blessed tonight, Pastor Peter, for being here with us and preach the word of God, which is, you know, God is here also with us. I mean, I can feel his presence so strong since yeah. the beginning of the, the service. You know, I feel like I'm going to fall on the floor, but I said, oh no. Like, I was just, oh God, please. Like, I was just start seeing, I can feel his presence so heavy. You know, and I feel like I just want to go on the floor and I said, oh no, I have to leave the, the singing. I couldn't. I mean, it's just so heavy, you know, his presence. But anyway, God is awesome. I mean, so yeah. uh, once again, we just want to thank you, Pastor Peter, for being here with us. And I know we will invite you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Please answer the phone. <laughs> but I said, no, I said no, because I know he's a busy man. Because, um, yeah, Pastor Shane said he's very busy. <laughs> I said, but I mean, thank God, like, he's here with us tonight. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so give him another hand. Yes, and yeah, let's go. So, yeah, God is awesome. I mean, uh, I think we will 
close the surface tonight and we will um, just to I mean I sing uh, then sings my soul just to close the prayer night and I would like Pastor Peter to lead us in the closing prayer but we just have to uh, sing this song then sings my soul and um, I would like to invite you all to stand and uh, we will just um, praise God tonight and let we let him let him know that uh, we really really uh, thank him for everything that he has done. Amen. Amen.
and may you lift the light of your countenance on us and give us your peace. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.